So good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for joining us um, on a Friday at 8 a.m. I'm not sure who scheduled it so early. I'm still trying to wake up. I haven't had coffee yet, so I hope you are. Um, so the, the purpose of, um, of this meeting is to let you guys know about the program, specifically the public administration program that's being offered over at Santiago Canyon College. Um, I don't plan to take too much of your time. Hopefully we can wrap it up in half an hour and I wanna have a, a quick round table um, with everybody as, as well. So to get started, I'm gonna tell you guys about the public administration program. So it's the first program in Southern California uh, at the community college level that's offering public administration as an associate's degree. And there's only one more program in California and that's offered up north. This program um, uh, started last year. So we had the first class in the fall. There was two classes offered. The first class was uh, public administration and the second class was um, public policy. So I'm, I'm gonna be teaching introduction to public administration. And really the purpose of, of the class is to just kind of get everybody's feet wet. It's just a very introductory role into what is public administration? How does it differ from business administration? You know, why is it important? Why should people learn about it? And who are the folks we're trying to target? So we're trying to, target individuals that are just getting out of high school or perhaps are working uh, adults that are already in uh, the public sector and perhaps don't have a, um, an education in public administration. So we really wanna educate them on what it is, you know, what is public administration? And one of the things that, um, that I talk about is, uh, or the way I define public administration is, you know, the formation and the implementation of public policy. Although we don't generate policy or then we don't create policy, public administrators are the, the individuals that are taking these policies and making them happen, right? The council members, our legislators, um, all these individuals are telling us what to do, we're making it happen. And that's what we wanna teach these individuals that are coming into the program is how do we make that happen? What are the rules that, that allow us to make that happen? You know, what are some of the ethics that, that we have to follow? What are some of the um, challenges? Uh, we also talk about finance, you know, what are some, what are some of our resources? Um, and just general politics as well, right? I know that recently we've had a lot of uh, uh, politics that have been, um, that have been in the media, such as uh, Black Lives Matter movement, there's been um, these um, really polarizing uh, political uh, views. And we, we need to in educate individuals on how those movements affect their jobs, right? I know in the city of Santa Ana, we, we, had, um, we had various um, days where we'd get an email saying, oh, there's gonna be protests coming down this way. You guys probably should leave at 5 p.m and how that uh, disrupts uh, public service. So I'm gonna take a quick quick uh, moment to ask all of you a, a couple of questions and I wanna get your perspectives. So if I know with Zoom, it gets a little weird sometimes. So instead of me just uh, open it up as a, as a blank slate, I'm just gonna call on each one of you and just ask, um, an answer for this question. So what I wanna know is when you guys are hiring individuals and they're gonna be, you're gonna be giving them a, a task to implement public policy or engage in public administration, what's, what are the things that you need them to know about? That's kind of what I'm interested in. So if I may, may, may I ask uh, Mr. Domer to, to kind of answer some of that, um, provide his thoughts on that question. Oh, fine, Mario, pick on me first. Um, yeah, you know, really what we look at is, um, you know, I, I always believe that you can train somebody to the subject matter uh, if they don't have it. Um, so it's that initial attitude and work ethic um, 
that, uh, you know, is there a drive? You know, as we all know, public service, uh, service, public, service to the public. Um, and so that needs to be kind of evident maybe in what they've done before, or at least in their outreach in communication in an interview panel, if they are brand new to the profession. Um, so, you know, really kind of look for that, knowing that a lot of new folks, uh, they may even be experimenting with what do they want to do and where they want to go. And um, it may not be the ultimate career choice for them. But, um, you know, I, I think it's that attitude and the willingness to always continue to learn. I, I tell all my staff, uh, even, you know, I took a, a certificate program three years ago, four years ago or so, uh, I don't stop learning in the job. And uh, I think that's very important uh, to do that. And then after we have, you know, in the public sector, you have very good retirement. So after that, I, I believe there's a, a requirement almost to give back and to continue the profession and to help out. So Okay. Well, appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for those thoughts. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to pick on the next person. I hope I don't get in trouble for this, but I'm going to pick on my boss, Ellen. <laughs> That's perfectly fine. Um, I work in human resources. So obviously when we hire people for jobs, we're normally thinking about individuals who already have skills and knowledge in a particular area. And so we hire for that. But if we switch the focus and we just consider, in general, who do we want to bring into the public sector? What do we want them to know? Or what attitude do we want them to have? I would say that um, we like these individuals to understand there's a distinction between the private sector and the public sector. The private sector is all about making money. And I understand that. Um, but, but we're not. We are about spending the money on the community in order to improve quality of life. So it's a different focus. And therefore, when we bring people in who are new and green to the public sector, I want them to understand the focus is on the community, the quality of life. It's not about making money for ourselves. It's about applying that money to the community to try to improve the community and the way of life. So that kind of public versus private sector difference is, is really important to me when I'm bringing new people in to the public administration. Okay, perfect. Thank you. I really appreciate that, that insight. Okay, so um, I'm going to pick on Miss Ms. Graham. Thanks, Mario. Uh, well, I would agree with Ken. I think a lot of things that we do in the public sector can be learned. Um, I always look for a team player, but I think most importantly, someone that is a critical thinker that can think about different solutions and um, help craft recommendations to policymakers. So definitely critical thinking, but a team player, a good attitude, sense of humor, because you have to have that in public administration, working in cities. And I think that is de that's definitely what I look for. Okay. Appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I'm going to uh, go with Mr. David. Yeah, at risk of uh, sounding like a broken record for you, Mario, it's really the soft skills that we're looking at in hiring yeah. capacity right now. And uh, considering kind of the demographic you're working with, you're talking about getting those students who are coming straight out of high school or just starting off on their college journey. Uh, all too often, they don't have a good context for a professional workplace and the soft skills that are required to succeed in a professional workplace. So you know, uh, academic programs and even our kind of on-the-job training does a great job of teaching the technical skills, to Ken's point, uh, but it's really hard to get people into the culture of the workplace. And I mean that in general, not the culture of a particular workplace. And so you know, any opportunities you have in curriculum development to start uh, taking the technical skills that you're teaching and applying them to real-world situations and how they would work through those problems from a problem solving perspective, how they would communicate with policy bodies or with members of the public. Uh, that's something that uh, I think we have the biggest challenge on when we're bringing in new employees, especially younger employees. They just don't have that context for what the professional workplace is. Okay. All right, I appreciate that, um, that insight. Um, Ms. Scarlett. Good morning, everybody. Um, so, 
I'm the executive director for the California State Association of Public Administrators, Public Guardians, and Public Conservators. So our members, um, and for those of you who don't know what that is, and almost nobody does, unless you work in the field, um, public administrators are the county official in each county that is responsible for um, managing the estates of decedents someone who has died and no one is there to, to probate their estate, nobody, or the court has decided that the family members are, are not competent to probate the estate. So they appoint the public administrator in the county to do that for um, the decedent. And when we hire, uh, and I was a public administrator, guardian and conservator for 30 years before I became the executive director of our association. We are the training, we are the certifying body uh, legally that has to certify all of our members. They have to get training through us. Um, and when we hire in the, in the field, what we're looking for are people who have good problem solving skills, who are able to work independently. Um, public administrator guardians and conservators are the fiduciary for their um, estates and their clients. And so we're looking for people who have a good, solid, ethical, um, ethical background in the sense of that they're, they're personally uh, solvent. They, they don't have bankruptcies. They don't have a criminal record, you know, those kinds of things, because we do take over the estate of the individual who is deceased and in the public guardian conservator realm, it's for live clients that we take over. So we take everything, um, we're responsible for everything in their world. So we sell their houses, their cars, we manage their assets, their stocks, their bonds. And so it's really important that our, our, our employees that we hire have a good solid uh, background that allows them to become the fiduciary. Uh, our, our, our employees have to work very independently so they need to be able to um, have a strong work ethic. That's another thing that we look for. We can teach, as um, Ken said, we can teach the technical side of things. As a matter of fact, the only way you can learn this business is by getting hired in a county office and being taught by your, your supervisors and peers. There's nowhere to go to get a degree in becoming a public administrator or a public guardian conservator. You, you have to learn it from those of us who have done it before. So we're looking for people who have good decision-making skills, who are able to think um, independently and who are, who are able to interpret the law because everything we do is by some code section, probate code, welfare and institutions code, those kinds of things. So we're looking for people who have a really broad uh, spectrum of skill sets we also have a lot of, uh, and, and, and the, the background of the people that we hire is very diverse as well. So um, along with the other soft skills that have already been mentioned, we're looking for, for people really who can, who can um, research and problem solve on all kinds of things because you're taking over uh, stocks, bonds, houses, cars, um, I had a cannon one time I had to try to find a way to sell. So, I mean, it's like anything that your mother, your grandmother, your uncle might own in their, their world, we become responsible for. So that's, um, that's why it's a very diverse background that we're looking for. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Now, Scarlett, uh, Buena Park's been kind of acting a little hostile towards us lately. Could I get that cannon? <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I found the I, I petitioned the court to allow me to give it to a family member because there was, I mean, we researched how do you sell a cannon? I mean, like a real cannon. And we weren't even sure legally we could sell a cannon. And so I was able to give it to a family member, thank God. <laughs> was this one of those 1800 cannons, like the old ones with like the wheels? Like and... an actual cannon, yeah. It was really? in the garage for years. I don't know how or why he got the cannon, didn't have any cannon balls that we found. So that was a good thing. <laughs> That's so interesting. Wow. Okay. So, um, um, Jamie, may I get your thoughts? Hi, good morning, everyone. 
I would echo a lot of what has already been said. Um, a couple of things that I'd like to really emphasize would be looking for service orientation. But what I mean when I say service orientation is more of looking at it from a customer experience perspective, not only in the delivery models, but as well as in the program design. So extending it beyond someone who wants to be helpful, but really adding that extra layer of critical thinking and empathy and understanding clients that we're serving and infusing that in all aspects of how we do business. Um, so someone with that mindset um, and desire to, to look at problems a little bit differently in that regard is really helpful. Also looking at uh, collaboration skills. So I think in most education programs today, um, you know, people are in group projects and things like that. But the way of public administration is that you are not just partnering with the division on your right or on your left, but you're looking, I work for county government. So we're working with other departments that at a glance may seem a little bit different, but that's what's necessary to provide this whole system of care. So really thinking outside of the box, of course, dealing with ambiguity because things change all of the time and being comfortable with that, um, but still finding a way to move forward. And finally, you never have what you need or what you think you need. So being really uh, comfortable with that, being resourceful and creative, because at the end of the day, we still have to deliver on, on what we've been asked to do and deliver that exceptional public service. So the critical thinking, the resourcefulness, the scrappiness, if you will, is really critical in someone who will not only be successful in public administration, but someone who will stay the course and, and not fall victim to, to burnout along the way. Okay, thank you. And uh, last but not least, Caroline. Well, actually, I'm the job developer at SEC, so I'm taking your guys' feedback and I, you know, take that back to our students and help them prepare um, to get jobs in your, with your agencies. Um, but I mean, I would agree, um, you know, across any industry, I think this is the number one thing we hear from our employers is um, the soft skills aspect of it. Um, you know, they can learn all of the hard skills and, you know, the, um, you know, quant uh, the things that you can train as far as computer skills and things of that nature. Um, but typically, you know, being able to work on a team, um, being able to uh, work independently, as a lot of you have said, um, being able to ask questions, you know, uh, being professional. So all of those things, I would, you know, just second, um, just based on a lot of the information I hear from various employers across the different industries. Okay. Well, I really appreciate everybody's feedback. So this is kind of what I heard. I heard a couple of reoccurring themes. The first theme was um, we're really looking for individuals that can distinguish the difference between private sector and public sector. And actually, I have a, I have a funny story. So I, I was working with um, with one of my uh, with a coworker, and she came from the um, she came from the private sector, and this was uh, a few years back. And she didn't understand um, that we couldn't just like move money around like once the council had appropriate money to a certain uh, pot of money, that's where it needed to be at. There was no, like, let's just shift it from here and move it over here and let's just spend it like at, at will, right? So I found I found her, her notion of uh, the public sector of just the inner uh, workings very interesting. It, it, it intrigued me um, because we, in the, in the public sector, we have so many rules, right? There's legislation as far as um, how we can spend money. And then council comes around, they draft the budget and they're like, this is how you can spend your money that we can, they, they appropriate it and then we can spend it, right? So I think a program that really educates individuals on some of those inner workings is really important so they can come in and, and just know the differences between uh, how a public sector um, functions and how the private sector functions and the differences. And then the other um, reoccurring theme I heard was 
just ethical behavior, right? We want to hire individuals that are that are ethical, that are going to really uh, emphasize that public service motivation. Um, I definitely know that we don't want to get bad publicity uh, on the newspapers on with one of our colleagues or uh, city employees doing something bad, right? That's that's not what we want to do because the taxpayers are going to look at us and and they're going to say we this that's our money. You're you're kind of wasting our money, right? So that's another reoccurring thing that I heard. The other uh, thing that I heard is soft skills. So and soft skills is a little, um, it, it's challenging for me to understand at times because there's so many soft skills, right? There's a whole entire spectrum. But I believe the, the one soft skill that, that individuals could really um, work, on, work on in the classroom is working co uh, cooperatively, right? Working together in groups, getting a lot of um, um, case studies and kind of thinking critically uh, through them. And I'll be sure to take that feedback that I just got from everybody to apply it to uh, my curriculum and to also take it to um, to our department coordinator, Sergio, so that he knows, you know, what are, what are some of the things that you're all looking for so that we can apply it to the curriculum so that we make sure that when we're educating these folks that are coming into our, our classes, that they are, uh, they know exactly what um, the policy streams are how, what their role is, how to work ethically, how to be good team players and work um, in, in a setting that's going to be uh, moving fast, that's going to be challenging. And so that when you guys hire these individuals, or maybe they're already in, in, your, um, in your place of, um, of business, um, they just come in with, they come back with more skills, right? So, so I'm going to be doing that. And the... The last thing I wanted to to um, to leave off with, because I know it's already 8:46, we're getting to to nine o'clock here real quick. I wanted to um, to just uh, make this statement. I, from a personal experience, I know that having these roundtables is for me. It's really important, and it's been really important for for me in my in my career endeavor. Um, when I was in, in graduate school, I had the uh, privilege of um, being selected to be in the City Managers Fellowship Program. And uh, I got mentored by um, uh, three different city managers. One of them, who's here with us right now, Ken, Ken Domer. Um, so it's really creating those uh, relationships and having um, these conversations that are really helpful for me, and I hope they're helpful for you. And hopefully, through this uh, little brainstorming session, we can uh, we can uh, bring in a new era of individuals into the public sector who are well educated, who are going to come in. They're going to be ethical and are going to provide um, better customer service to the residents that we that we serve. So, with that, I wanted to open it up to see if anybody had any thoughts, questions, comments. Yes, sir. I'm always going to comment on something. Um, I wanted to kind of follow up on something that Scarlett said um, about, you know, learning on the job and uh, from early on. So, you know, I have a very career where I wasn't always in city government. Uh, I've been in the county government. I've been at the state government. Um, and then I was getting my master's when I was working up in Sacramento and the USC center was up there. So it was, it was very convenient to go there uh, and they made it worth, worthwhile with some, uh, a lot of, good uh, student aid and all that stuff. But one of the things I found is when I was up there, they were bringing in, the professors were bringing in practitioners. So we had the Marin County treasurer, we had the state treasurer, we had legislators come in and talk to the classrooms and all that stuff. Uh, uh, Antonia or Tony, she's two offices down from me, is a professor at Cal State Fullerton and I'll be talking to her class and I do that on a yearly basis. So I, I think it's critical that the, in education, the practitioner based versus the book theory based, you know, so yeah, you have to have those basic concepts of, you know, public administration and this and that, but you have to hear from the professionals who are there on a, a daily basis in order to truly understand and get the updated. So I just want to encourage that. And then um, 
Also, kind of going back on the soft skills, you know, one of the big things is because we are public service, that customer service. Tony and I were just talking about this last week where, uh, you know, I worked as my first job was a bus boy. And then I worked as a uh, in the oyster bar at a restaurant in Orange that's no longer there. And Tony worked at Nordstrom's, which, you know, uh, she accepted tires in the uh, woman's dress section to uh, whatever. But it's those things. We, we know there are people who are highly critical of public servants. And, you know, inside your voice says you want to fight back, you want to do whatever. But on the outside, you got to be like, you know, I, I appreciate what you're saying and I'm hearing what you're saying. So let's let's work on this and we'll make that change. And so those skills are critical because I can't tell you, you know, unfortunately, I, I do get kudos for city employees. Uh, and I know our city employees do a lot of good stuff and people are appreciative, but you only get those complaints. And so, you know, um, yeah, it's a, it's a hard job, but, you know, that's that, that soft skill that a lot of times people, especially I think in the younger generation, they're not, um, you know, they push back a lot more. Uh, and you've got to be able to accept it. You've got to let it flow off and you've got to be able to say, I, I hear where you're coming from and yeah, let's, let's make that change, uh, but let's fix this current problem. And most of the time, just hearing the person out cures a lot, so. So you know, can I ask you um, a quick question? So help me define, I guess, those specific soft skills that you would be looking for for an employee. Like what are some of those critical things that, that you would like to see? I think, you know, uh, it, it really even starts because we know when we're hiring somebody and everybody who's hired somebody, you get a pile, I have piles of documents and all that stuff. You get a pile of resumes and all that stuff and you're looking for certain things and all that stuff. And, you know, out of the 75 or 150 you get, we know that 18 will make it to where you look closer at them and then eventually six or eight will be on the pile. So, you know, there's courses about how to make yourself stand out on that, but it's when you get in to the interview session and you want to, you know, actively listen, engage. Uh, you're not looking away from the person that's asking you a question and all that stuff. So it's that eye contact, it's the customer service, it's the understanding, it's the empathy. Um, and it's really kind of, as a public servant, you have to open yourself up to various people in various issues and being accepting of that. So yeah, soft skills, the, the reason they're called soft skills is because they're hard to define. But it's, I think from my perspective, it's those, the empathy, the understanding, the active listening, the uh, eye on contact. Uh, so I'm looking at you right now, I'm not looking at the camera, but um, things like that, so. Yeah, okay. be, be, before Ken even started to answer, you know, Mario, I was thinking uh, effective listening and effective communications are two of the big soft skills right now. Um, we are bringing so many people into our workforce who are used to working in different modes of communication than what we use in our professional setting. So, um, you know, the ability to be present with a person, to listen actively with that person, really hear what they have to say before you respond. And then the ability to respond effectively. Uh, people need to be able to do that, not only spoken, um, and I would have said in person, but now we're doing everything virtually. So not only spoken, but they need to be able to write effectively and professionally. And they need to be able to address multiple different audiences. You know, they might be speaking with Mr. Domer, a city manager one day, and then speaking to a member of the public who doesn't understand the business at all, but wants an explanation the next day. And then uh, speaking to a member of the policy body, you know, later in that same day, and they need to have strategies to effectively communicate with all of those different audiences and across different mediums. And, um, you know, we, we've all kind of defaulted to a, a text kind of communication style. I know I have, and I'm by no means a millennial and way beyond that. But, uh, you know, I've gotten uh, really terse in my communications and I do a lot of texting and a lot of short form communication, but I need to be able to turn it back on, you know, depending on what my audience is. If I'm chatting with somebody in the office via instant message, you know, maybe that's appropriate, but uh, I also need to be able to change modes. That's a really tough soft skill to teach. And that's, uh, um, somebody made the point earlier and I apologize, I don't remember who it was that, you know, sometimes you just need to get into these roles in order to learn these roles. And I think that type of communication is, is one of them. Um, and the more you can do to introduce people to that in an academic setting, whether it's bringing in uh, different speakers and having them communicate with different speakers or putting them in scenarios that they might be in 
uh, once they actually enter the workplace, I think would be tremendously helpful for them to see it and begin to uh, kind of internalize it. Okay, well, I appreciate that. It's, it's funny that you mentioned that. So I'm gonna look around, hopefully my kids are not hearing me because they're gonna kill me. <laughs> but so I know my, my kids are, we all had, I'm a millennial, but I still remember not having a cell phone. I still remember my dad would give me a, um, a bunch of dimes. He'd be like, call me when you get to the theater. Mm-hmm. Use the the pay phone and just let me know you're there, and just call me again when you need when you need me pick uh, when when you need me pick you pick you up. And I'm like, okay. Now my kids, even now, like they'll text me. They'll be like, hey dad, I'm hungry already, and they won't necessarily talk to me. And they're like just in the kitchen. And um, so I know recently I've been noticing that, and I've been trying to make it a point that we need to have more conversations. Um, sit down around the kitchen table and just have these conversations because it's important for them to have, um, like Mr. Uh, Domer was saying, you, you know, just eye contact, um, active listening, listening, making sure that you're engaged in the conversation. And I know um, that I struggle with that sometimes with, with my kids. And um, and I know that I, me personally, sometimes I even struggle that with that with them where it's easy for me to just text them back and say, hey, yeah, I'll be right there. And we don't engage on a face-to-face conversation. And yeah, we definitely need to uh, to work on that, especially yeah. in the academic uh, setting. And even when we are face-to-face, we're all you know, looking at each other. <laughs> yeah. I, I would add too to those skills. You know, I think now more than ever in government, we wear so many different hats. We're under almost assault by the public. Um, to do more with less, you know, residents want these freemium services. So I think, you know, I know it, I teach my students and I teach a public admin class at Cal State Fullerton. We do a, a group project called Creating an Ideal Agency. And I want my students to think out of the box and think about being innovative and entrepreneurial almost so that they think of ways to be creative to continue to serve residents, whether their budget was cut, I give them different scenarios and they have to create an agency that takes the whole entire semester into account, everything they've, they've learned and create an agency that they think would be, you know, whether it's a public works agency or a, you know, a special district, they have different scenarios and they have to be able to um, continue to provide services um, to the residents and be, be really creative and be entrepreneurial and, and really enthusiastic every day coming to work, even though it can be, um, you know, you might feel beaten down, but you have to continue to provide services no matter what the outlook is at your office. So you have to be motivated and enthusiastic. That's an awesome project. I'd love to be a fly on the wall whenever you <laughs> teach that. <laughs> so invite me to your classroom. I'll sit all the way in the back. <laughs> um, okay, that's that's good to know. Yeah, I, I definitely agree that I, I'm a visual learner and I, I love learning with um, like in these hypothetical scenarios because they really help me think outside the box. So I'll be sure to implement some of that into my curriculum as well. Um, so I wanna be respectful of your time. I, I see that it's already 8.58, time just goes by so quick. I know it's Friday, I'm not sure if you guys are working or if you guys have a flex day. Um, I know that I gotta run back to the office. Uh, I gotta be there at 9.30, but I do appreciate every everybody's time. Does anybody have any questions, comments? Any thoughts? If not, I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. Have an amazing weekend. And uh, hopefully, uh, if you guys have any questions, just um, uh, I'll send you guys my information. You guys can, can contact me. Thank you.